Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Master English. This is podcast number 40, episode number 40 already. Thank you so much for downloading and listening to my podcast. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible. That's right, the Audible book company by Amazon. Oh boy, we've got a great new book for this month's book club. Yes, I will be doing a video lesson on the book. The book is Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff, but I'll talk more about that later. We need to get into today's podcast. Of course, we have the news. We've got interesting facts by Shane, country Shane, that is. And we have three great questions from you. So, enough chit-chat. Let's get going. Let's get to the news. (music) Having a hard time getting your kids to eat their veggies? Maybe you don't want to eat your veggies. If you could only eat chocolate cake every day, your prayers have been answered. A new fork has been developed that will trick your mind into thinking it's eating chocolate ice cream when it's actually eating broccoli. How? Aromas. The fork is designed to give off a wide variety of aromas while you eat. Those smells override your sense of taste. Go vegan. But taste steak. <laughs> what am I talking? I'm talking about food, right? The story is about food. It's a new invention, and it's pretty interesting. I don't know. Are you interested in this? Well, let's listen again. I'll read it slower. Having a hard time getting your kids to eat their veggies? Maybe you don't want to eat your veggies. If only you could eat chocolate cake every day. Your prayers have been answered. A new fork has been developed that will trick your mind into thinking it is eating chocolate ice cream when it is actually eating Broccoli. (laughs) How? Aromas. The fork is designed to give off a wide variety of aromas while you eat. Those smells override your sense of taste. Go vegan, but taste steak. There you go. Amazing, fascinating science. Now, this is chemical science, and chemical science is scary to me. However, for some people, this might be really interesting. You can eat really healthy food, but taste something totally different. So, for example, if you don't like to eat something, something, well, maybe medicine or maybe broccoli or some other food that you just don't like the taste, but you know the food is very healthy and you should eat it, but you can't, it tastes too terrible. Well, if you use this fork, you can create a smell that you like. So, While you're eating the disgusting food, you're smelling the smell that you like, and it's easy. It smells like you're eating something delicious. (laughs) Wow, pretty amazing. So let's look at the first sentence again. Having a hard time getting your kids to eat their veggies? Now that's a question. Grammatically, Are you having a hard time, a difficult time, getting your kids, having your kids, making your kids, forcing your kids to eat their veggies? V-E-G-G-I-E-S, veggies are, of course, 
vegetables, V-E-G-E-T-A-B-L-E-S. When I was a child, I hated eating vegetables. And my mother made vegetables every meal. Now, corn was okay. But potatoes, blech. Broccoli, blech. Salad, yeah, it's okay. Carrots, blech. Oh, tomatoes, blech. No way. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. So when I was a child, I did not want to eat my veggies. But my mom was able to force me to eat my veggies because she said, if you do not eat your veggies, I will not give you a cookie. And it worked because I always wanted to have a cookie. So I ate my veggies. (laughs) But nowadays, still, it's it's a problem for many families. So are you having a hard time getting your kids to eat their veggies? Hmm, the next one. Maybe you don't want to eat your veggies. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know about you, but for many Americans, they just do not eat enough vegetables. They're eating pizzas and, you know, I mean, junk food. Now, of course, on the pizza, there are mushrooms and peppers and tomatoes, But that's not the idea. Having vegetables means a bowl of carrots, a plate of, you know, broccoli, something separate, cooked in a good, natural way. That's the idea of vegetables, not in pizza. Hey, look at a hamburger. On a hamburger, you've got tomatoes, you've got pickles, you've got lettuce. There's your vegetables, right? Of course not. That's not what we mean. So I know many adults do not want to eat their veggies. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next one. If only you could eat chocolate cake every day. Uh, What a beautiful life that would be. What's for breakfast? Chocolate cake. Mm, Delicious. What's for lunch? How about some chocolate cake? Thank you. What would you like for dinner? Oh, how about chocolate cake? There you go. Oh, boy, that would be heaven. Of course, that's not realistic. And probably after two or three times, you would not want to have chocolate cake. But anyway, the idea is nice. The idea. If only you could eat chocolate cake every day. Well, your prayers have been answered. Prayers, P-R-A-Y-E-R-S. Now, when we say pray or prayer, we usually think of religion, you know, praying to God. Um, But when we hope for something, when we really want something, we can also say, your prayers have been answered. Your wishes have come true. Your dreams have been realized. (gasps) What? We can eat chocolate cake every day? Let's listen. A new fork has been developed that will trick your mind into thinking it is eating chocolate ice cream when it's actually eating broccoli. Wow, this is amazing. So a new fork, F-O-R-K, spoon, knife, fork. A new fork has been developed Invented, made, created. Oh, okay, and what does this new fork do? That will trick your mind. Your mind is your brain. Trick. That will fool your brain. F-O-O-L. That will manipulate. M. That's a tough word. I'll spell it. M-A-N-I-P-U-L-A-T-E. So this fork will manipulate your brain into thinking something. This new fork will trick your brain into thinking something. This new fork will fool your mind into thinking it's eating chocolate ice cream when it is actually eating broccoli. 
Now, broccoli is a vegetable. It's a green vegetable. B-R-O-C-C-O-L-I. When I was a child, I hated broccoli. Now, I love broccoli. But some people don't like it. But could you imagine? You can see broccoli and you're eating broccoli, but the taste and the smell is like chocolate ice cream. This sounds cool. It sounds dangerous at the same time. <gasps> wow, this is amazing. How, how can this be? So the next question, how? And the answer, aromas. A-R-O-M-A-S. Aromas, smells, mm, odors. O-D-O-R-S, usually of food. And when we say aroma, it's usually food. And it's usually very good. The next sentence. The fork is designed to give off a wide variety of aromas while you eat. Okay, so this is a special fork and it has a special design. And because of this special design, the fork is able to give off or eat emit, E-M-I-T, or, or give the smell, deliver the smell. This fork is designed to give off a wide variety of aromas while you eat. So you can pick a different aroma, and while you eat, you will smell the aroma, and the next part is amazing. Those smells override your sense of taste. The smells that you smell are stronger. The sensation or the brain sees it more strongly than the taste in your mouth. So when you eat broccoli, you can taste it. But if you eat broccoli and smell coffee, you cannot taste the broccoli. You're smelling the coffee. The coffee smell is more powerful than the taste of broccoli. And while you're eating broccoli, you're actually tasting coffee. It's amazing. Wow. So the last sentence. Go vegan, but taste Steak. <laughs> so go vegan. V-E-G-A-N. Vegan is vegetarian. Complete vegetarian. Of course, no beef, no pork, no chicken, no fish, no milk, no cheese, no eggs, no ice cream. Nothing, nothing from animals at all. That is vegan. Many people want to be vegans. Well, now you can become a vegan and only eat vegetables. But thanks to this new fork, you can have the smell of steak. And you can smell steak while you're eating broccoli. Oh, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Is this a good idea? Would you be interested in buying something like this? If you have children, are you having a difficult time encouraging your child to eat good food? Do you think if you could make the broccoli and carrots taste like vanilla ice cream, do you think your children would eat carrots and broccoli? Hmm, very interesting. Interesting questions. Interesting invention. Yeah, this is kind of exciting. Science is pretty scary. Science is pretty exciting. F me, personally, I'm not interested. I don't want the chemical smells. I, you know, it's chemicals. It's not real smells. The, the aromas are made with chemicals. Um, but, you know, once again, for some people, it might be an excellent idea. <laughs> Let's check out those vocabulary words again. Veggies. V-E-G-G-I-E-S. Vegetables. What is your favorite veggie? 
My favorite veggie it probably still is corn. Developed. D-E-V-E-L-O-P-E-D. In this case, developed means invented. Trick. To trick. To fool. F-O-O-L. Or to manipulate. M-A-N-I-P-U-L-A-T-E. Aromas. A-R-O-M-A-S. Aromas. Smells. Odors. Usually of food and they're usually good. Give off, a phrasal verb to give off, to emit, E-M-I-T, to deliver a smell. Override, to override, O-V-E-R-R-I-D-E, that's one word. So those smells override your sense of taste. Those smells are more powerful than your sense of taste to override something, to take control over, to be stronger than something else and be in control, take the power. And finally, vegan. V-E-G-A-N. Yeah, it's not vegan, it's not vegan, it's vegan. Vegan, a complete vegetarian. Absolutely nothing from animals. Not even ice cream. (laughs) I like ice cream. Okay, those are the words. Let's listen to the story two more times. The first time, nice and smooth. The second time, normal. Are you ready? Here we go. Having a hard time getting your kids to eat their veggies. Maybe you don't want to eat your veggies. (sighs) If only you could eat chocolate cake every day. Your prayers have been answered. A new fork has been developed that will trick your mind into thinking it's eating chocolate ice cream when it's actually eating broccoli. How? Aromas. The fork is designed to give off a wide variety of aromas while you eat. Those smells override your sense of taste. Go vegan, but taste steak. Having a hard time getting your kids to eat their veggies? Maybe you don't want to eat your veggies. (sighs) If only you could eat chocolate cake every day. Your prayers have been answered. A new fork has been developed that will trick your mind into thinking it's eating chocolate ice cream when it's actually eating broccoli. How? Aromas. The fork is designed to give off a wide variety of aromas while you eat. Those smells override your sense of taste. Go vegan, but taste steak. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. There are only five tastes that we can taste. Sweetness, sourness, saltiness, bitterness, and umami. But the nose knows a trillion smells. A trillion. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Wow, very interesting. So, when it comes to taste, there are only five tastes that humans can sense. Sweetness, sourness, saltiness, bitterness, and umami. Umami, yes, it's a Japanese word. This taste was defined by a Japanese scientist. U-M-A-M-I, umami. However, the nose knows, that is N-O-S-E, K-N-O-S, same pronunciation. The nose knows a trillion smells. A trillion. Oh my goodness. So, a trillion. How many zeros in one trillion? Anybody? 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 Twelve. That is one comma 
zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero zero zero. One trillion smells. Yeah, that's what the scientists say. If you if you you don't believe me, you don't believe country Shane. Well, hey, he got this from Live Science. So get the newsletter. If you get the newsletter, all of these links are in there. And you can find the original information. Country Shane, thank you for those very interesting facts. All right, it's time for some questions and answers. And the first question is from Jack. Jack has two questions. Number one, how can I distinguish can and can't? For example, I can play baseball and I can't play baseball. And the next question is, it's hard for me to understand numbers. 34%, 1687, 1,764,000. If I concentrate too much on numbers, then I miss the rest of the sentences. What can I do? What can I do? Great questions, Jack. So first of all, for can and can't, Yes, I know it is confusing if you are only listening and looking at words. I want you and everybody to remember, can and can't require body language or at least expression or intonation. There is feeling. Nobody speaks like a robot. I can do it. I can't do it. Okay? Nobody says that. This is what we say. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. But this is a podcast. You need to see me. I'm being positive. I might be nervous, but you can see in my expression that I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. However, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I cannot do it. I can't do it. There's body language. It means no. You can see it in the person's expression. But, you know, I understand. Sometimes you're listening to a podcast. I can play baseball. I can't play baseball. How do you know which is which? Well, C-A-N almost always, in American English, not always, almost always, sounds like can, can, I can. I can play. I can play. I can play. But can't sounds like can't. Very strong ant. I can't play. I can't play baseball. I can't play baseball. I can play baseball. I can play baseball. I can't play baseball. Can you speak English? I can speak English. I can't speak English. I can't speak English. Jack, there's no easy way to do the can and can't thing. What's the most important thing is you need to say these sentences a lot. And like I tell my DDM students, if you can say it like a native English speaker, you can hear it. It takes lots of practice. And it's not just the sound. It's the expression, the feeling, the understanding. It has to be natural. Your next question, numbers. Yeah, numbers are tough. Numbers, you need to practice. And when I studied the Korean language, I spent, seriously, Jack, for about one week, I I only concentrated on numbers. For one week, that's all I did. Numbers, 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 numbers. I read numbers. uh, I, I wrote numbers. I spoke numbers. I listened for numbers. I didn't care anything about any conversation. All I wanted to hear was numbers. So I would watch the business news and I would listen for the numbers, the numbers, and I would try to repeat. When I would walk down the street, I would say the numbers, the numbers, practicing the numbers. And then I would ask my Korean friends to listen to my pronunciation. How is my pronunciation? So you need to practice, you need to focus. And after my one week of doing that and getting coaching, by Korean people, no more problems. Seriously, Jack, no more problems. At that point, from that point on, my understanding of numbers in a sentence was very natural because I could say the numbers just like a Korean person. Now, once again, Korean people helped me with my pronunciation. You've got to get that native 
English pronunciation for English numbers, American pronunciation, British pronunciation, whatever. You need to get that pronunciation down and then you need to practice saying numbers, all types of numbers. And seriously, after a week, that problem disappears. But you got to focus. You got to focus, Jack. Thanks for the question. Our next question comes from Maria De Filia Astete. I hope my pronunciation was not too horrible. Um, Maria likes the website. Thank you very much. Our website is terrible, Maria. You're lying. Um, no, I'm teasing. Max is uh, currently thinking about how we are going to create our new website. We will make a new one, and it's going to be great, um, but uh, we're developing it. Thank you. Anyway, uh, Maria is from Venezuela, but she has been living in Mexico, Mexico for five years, and she's thinking about taking the IELTS test next month. Ooh. So she needs to practice and study. She took the exam three years ago, but she says, I need to improve my listening and speaking. My reading and writing are good. So, I would like to know what your suggestions are for me to improve my listening and speaking. Well, Maria, to be honest, uh, join DDM. Uh, that's the easiest way to, to concentrate on your speaking and listening skills. That is what I teach, speaking and listening. Now, DDM is not you know for everybody. I understand that. So, Maria, what you need to do is, in order to improve your speaking and listening, the first thing you need to really work on is pronunciation, natural pronunciation. Now, remember, there are two types of pronunciation. There's perfect pronunciation and there's native pronunciation. So, for example, I can't do that. That's perfect pronunciation. Native, native pronunciation, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. To be honest, Maria, I recommend all students work on perfect pronunciation. And then naturally, natural pronunciation comes. But Maria, you don't have much time. If you're thinking of taking the IELTS test next month, to be honest, there's nothing you can do in one month to improve your listening and speaking. Uh, well, that's not true. If you can spend, seriously, three, four, five hours a day practicing speaking, it will help you so much. I don't know if you have an English teacher or what, what's going on, but one thing that you might want to do is get some situation comedies that you like. Maybe Friends or I don't know what the sitcoms out there or something. Anyway, get some TV shows that you like and go online and find the transcripts. Now, to be honest, most of those transcripts have many, many mistakes. But you only have a month, so there's nothing you can do. My recommendation, listen and watch the television show and watch the transcript three times. The first time, watch it. The second time, watch and read. The third time, try to repeat the transcript with the actual actors and go through every show three times for one month and go through a hundred shows. And I guarantee your speaking and listening absolutely will improve. Or you can join DDM and enjoy studying. But once again, everybody, uh, and I'm serious here, DDM is not uh, be fluent in English in three months class. No, this is a deep, fun class. This is really going to give you a solid base, but it takes a long time to get that base. But anyway, Maria, if you can say it, you can hear it. That's our philosophy in DDM. So concentrate on your pronunciation. Concentrate on your speaking. Concentrate on speaking as normal as possible. Perfect pronunciation is great, but get that normal pronunciation too. And that will help your listening skills very much. And our third question comes from Gustavo. Gustavo is a DDM student. Let me read his letter. Hi, Shane. I'm sure that I'll be able to understand 
all of your lessons with lots of practice and by following your tips. I don't have any doubts about your methods and DDM. I enjoy your explanation and answer videos and I love doing the dictation and studying pronunciation. I practice a lot every day and I'm trying to practice with other students, but sometimes it's not easy. The time differences, family, the busy life. Every night I watch movies, serials, and I think, uh, Gustavo, it's not serials. We can just say TV dramas or sitcoms. He watches things like The Mentalist, Man vs. Food, Bones, and CIS. I think they're all American shows. Do you know some of them? Do you think it's good to practice watching other TV shows? Will that improve my listening? Thank you for your help, your student, Gustavo. Gustavo, yes. Uh, now, Gustavo has been a DDM student for a while, but in the past couple of months, he's really been practicing hard, and he also records himself and uploads his pronunciation of our DDM lessons. He uploads those on our Let's Master English community. And it's interesting listening to Gustavo's pronunciation because in the beginning, to be honest, it was so-so. But after a couple months, it's much, much better. I'm very pleased. Now, I always tell Gustavo and I tell all my DDM students, Practicing the pronunciation is very important. Listening to my videos, listening to my answers video, and practicing the pronunciation is absolutely essential. You have to do that. But the big advantage, if you are a DDM Live or a DDM VIP student, the biggest advantage is the live classes when you can meet with me directly and I can hear your pronunciation and I can give you tips on this or that uh, thing that you might have a problem with. It's a long process. Some people want me to tell them every mistake they make. I can do that, but you need to tell me. Other people, they're more shy. They need to build their confidence. So I go slower with those students. So if, if you're a DDM Live or a DDM VIP student and you want me to be nicer, I will be. If you want me to be harder, I will be. There's no problem there, but you guys got to let me know. So Gustavo, I've been a little bit hard on him because it's difficult for him to join the Hangouts. And I want you to, Gustavo, keep doing it. You're doing a great job. And yes, to answer your question, watching other TV shows besides the ones that we study in DDM, is a great help. However, I know this is difficult, Gustavo, but I highly recommend you watch those shows with no Spanish. No Spanish subtitles. Of course, no Spanish dubbing. Only the original English. And and I know people don't like this, but Gustavo, I know Gustavo's English. Gustavo's uh, grammar and vocabulary structure is very good. So for Gustavo if you're and everybody else, if you've got good grammar, if you've got good vocabulary, I recommend not using subtitles, especially for TV shows. And yes, it's difficult. It's really tough. But that's the best way. It's the quickest way. That's what I did with Korean. That's how I learned my Korean. There were no subtitles. I had to listen to everything. And then, you know, if I was lucky, once a week I would be able to meet my Korean friend and I could practice. And he would help me with my pronunciation. And that's what DDM is. That's the whole idea of DDM. So, Gustavo, yes, keep watching those different TV shows. And once again, do your best to join those hangouts. DDM VIP, everybody, is completely full. Now, we have no places available. But DDM uh, Live is open, and we are happy to have you join us. If you're interested in joining DDM Live right now, you can go to dailydictation.blogspot.com. Dailydictation.blogspot. That's B-L-O-G-S-P-O-T.com. 
and you can sign up right there. So Gustavo, you're doing great. Keep up the great work. Thanks for the questions, everybody. And that brings us to another end of another podcast. This is Let's Master English Podcast 40. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Now, once again, we have a book club. And the last book we studied was Tuesdays with Maury. And I made a video. And, ah, yeah, I'm still trying to understand how I should do this book club book club for everybody. But I've spoken with several people who uh, also studied the book. They liked my video. They enjoyed my video very much. And what I think is going to happen is our members are going to create hangouts and basically study groups where they're going to talk to each other, ask each other questions, and talk about the books. So this should be a very exciting thing. But it requires you, the community. I'm going to give you some guidance and I will help you uh, along the way as we study the book. I would love to take your questions and I'll even have a section here in the Let's Master English podcast where I'll answer some questions for the books. So the book, the next book that we're going to study is once again Don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. That's the name of the book that we're going to uh, be promoting for this month. So if you are not a member of Audible, then please go through me. www.audibletrial, that's A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L www.audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. That's Let's Master English, L-M-E. Now, if you go here and you sign up, you can get the book for free. Don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. You just go to that website, and it will redirect you. Search for the book, Don't Sweat, S-W-E-A-T. Don't sweat the small stuff. And it's all small stuff. It's written by Richard Carlson. And it's narrated by him too, Richard Carlson. It's four hours and three minutes long. Normally, this book is like $22. But you can get it for free. If you are an Audible member, excellent. You can get, now you pay every month, uh, the first month is free, but then you have to pay $15 a month. I think it's $14.95 a month. Don't worry, you can still get this book for $14.95 a month because you're a member. So you can save $7. That's pretty awesome. Now this book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. It's about philosophy, life, how we should live. It's a nice book. It's not that difficult. I read the book several years ago, and now we're going to uh, study the book in its audio form format. So you can read the book. You can listen to the book. You can do both. That doesn't bother me. You can do whatever you want. How can you be a member of the Let's Master English Book Club? You are. Just get the book. Once again, get the audio book or the written book. I don't care, but I want you to get the book. So what we're going to do basically is I want you to focus on the first hour, hour and a half of the book. Concentrate on the first hour, hour and a half of the book for this week. If you have any questions about the book, send them to me. Also put them on our community. And next week in our podcast, I'll talk about some of your questions and I'll do my best to answer some of those questions and to help you understand the book. And we'll continue like that. I think that'll be a good format. And people who are interested in talking to each other, in debating the book, and asking each other questions about the book, please use our community. We have two great places where you can communicate. But the best is the Google Plus community. The Google Plus community, the name is Let's Master English. So you go there and just say hi. Leave a comment. Look at all the different messages. 
Okay, so that is our sponsor for this podcast. Once again, Audible. Thank you so much, Audible, for for helping us out here. And I hope that you guys who are interested get the book. Once again, www.audibletrial.com slash LME. Go there, sign up, get the book. Don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. That's the name of the book, okay? There you go. Thank you again, once again, to everybody and Audible. And also a huge thank you to our transcription team. Every week, we have a group of people, a group of you, who are listening to this podcast and writing down everything I say. So there's a script that we can share with everybody. And you can find those PDF files on our website, www.letsmasterenglish.com. And if you have an Android phone, get the app. You can get the app for free, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash app. And on the app, you can also get the text files. This app was designed by Max. And Max is a superhero. And I want to say something real quick about Max. Max is a great guy. He's been with me uh, from the beginning of DDM. Max has an illness. It's a strange illness, and it's a very dangerous disease. Right now, he is getting treatment, and he'll be going to uh, overseas to get some more treatment. It's very expensive and very difficult for Max. Um, he's unable to work at an office but uh, he, he can work a little. And Max has set up a Patreon page. www.patreon.com slash Maxim. That's M-A-X-I-M. He needs our help, everybody. Um, he's in a tough situation. And he, uh, he needs our help. So if you can help him out. I know Max would greatly appreciate it. Max is a computer specialist. He's a genius when it comes to computers. So if you have any questions uh, regarding computers, Max is there to help you. He's got different levels, so go to his Patreon page and check that out. And please help Max out. I'm helping Max out, and I know several of you are already helping him out. And uh, Max, we love you. We wish you the best. All right, that's it. I just want to say once again, thank you to everyone who listens and enjoys my podcast. And I promise to be here as long as I can. Together, let's master English. English.